Welcome to Bespoke Diaries, today's article is on, One Plate at a Time, Journey and Dreams of a Food Stylist, by Caroline Ismail, Founder, and Managing Director, Food Art Concept, United Arab Emirates, France. The story of how a food styling company was born and how one dream lead to another. Founder Caroline Ismail, on starting her business Food Art Concept, in the United Arab Emirates and her passion to support social impact going forward. It's no secret, that sometimes the most challenging and emotionally turbulent periods are those that bring deep transformation and progress. She will share the lows and highs, as a reflection of how each journey is unique, and that believing in one's dreams and working hard to achieve them, is the best investment in self. Caroline Ismail, Caro to her clients, and she is the founder of Food Art Concept, a food styling and consultancy business, now successfully closing in on its eighth year. Proudly, the company has reached a point of maturity and is well positioned to lead by providing expert niche services to global centralized food companies, some of the largest in the world, supporting creative and commercial advertising requirements across the region. Some doors closed and others opened, and her long-held dream of combining food and creativity into her own venture was born. She took the leap in 2015, enrolling in an advanced food styling and technical training course through ICC, a leading institute in Manhattan, New York, and the rest is history. As they say, while this may read with hedonistic charm, the pressure to return and make something of herself, was a very challenging part of the entrepreneurial journey. There were many practical lifestyle adjustments too, like creating a routine that she could commit to, self-motivation when working by herself, and managing imposter syndrome that can sometimes creep in, always uninvited. To frame this journey, she should share that everything that has happened up until this point has been preparing her for her role today, and the transition she aims to make successfully in the future. Her early education, emerging from a culturally diverse background with influences from France, Lebanon, and Romania, followed by a decision to pursue an MBA in international hospitality and marketing of services from the University of Management La Rochelle, France a hospitality degree, and then her many professional experiences derived from international postings within leading hospitality groups, have culminated in a progressive exploration of the world of food and gastronomy. It's been her passion all along and remains the driver and motivation for the good fortune and success she has had thus far. She also gives credit to her incredible family and precious circle of friends who instilled a culture of respect for mealtimes, a love of food, the practice of never wasting, all of which provide firm ground for the path she has chosen. She has always loved food, its source and origin, its preparation, and the beauty of harnessing quality and achieving elegance and simplicity. As she matures, she considers how her relationship with food has changed, from health to increased awareness of issues related to irresponsible consumption and the importance of advocacy and influence in food controls, particularly for children and youth growing up today, to acquiring a new vocabulary and changing mindsets from healthy eating to ethical eating. If she were to sum up her best advice, aimed at those thinking about starting a business she would break it down to the following, it is good to have a plan, but be ready to let that plan evolve. Where limited experience in starting up and marketing your own business might be the reason for not taking steps forward, there are so many great resources that are virtually free at your disposal. She needed to develop new skills and found HubSpot, Hootsuite and Masterclass so helpful for everything from creating business plans, to managing her own website, and developing better entrepreneurial skills. Ask someone to mentor you, there are so many highly experienced experts who are ready to offer great advice. Start small, with what you've got. Starting up comes with some unforeseen and sometimes hidden costs, but it's easy to place importance on the things that won't help your business at the outset. In 2015 the only option available to her at the time was a freelance and entrepreneur license, through 2454, located in Abu Dhabi. The license was affordable and allowed her to carry out her business without overly burdensome licensing fees and office space requirements. 
In 2019 after four years of developing her business, she upgraded to a fully limited company within MZA, Abu Dhabi Media, because her business had steadily matured. One plate at a time. Trust yourself and find your inner circle. There is greatly value to listening to your inner voice or your gut feeling. She has also learnt over time that making a decision when she is distracted, or lacking focus will not derive the best result. If it means taking an extra day or a few hours, try to take your decisions with great clarity. It will serve you and your business in the long term. Take the time to surround yourself with a few trusted people you know you can count on. They might have different skills than you, and they might have different priorities, but what has stood her in good stead is a close few that have stood by when she has really needed perspective, objectivity, and most importantly honesty. You know who you are. A few of her favorite reads, that might be of interest, 1. Micro Mastery by Robert Twigger, 2017, Learn Fast and Find the Hidden Path to Happiness 2. Business for Bohemians by Tom Hodgkinson, 2016, Live Well, Make Money 3. Rumi, 2010, The Big Red Book, The Great Masterpiece Celebrating Mystical Love and Friendship. 4. Jim Collins, 2001, Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't 5. Solve for Happy by McGordat, 2017, Engineer Your Path to Joy 6. The Little Book of Ikigai by Ken Morji, 1988-2017. The Secret Japanese Way to Live a Happy and Long Life. 7. Kellogg on Marketing by Taibout Calder, 2010, The Marketing Faculty of Kellogg School of Management 8. Dun Mondal Ultra by Nicholas Illo, Frederic Lenore, 2020. Le Temps des Consciences Those reads became like your go-to reference, you take note, include the tips, read another book, come back to that note. They are here to stay forever. Change is a certainty. Adapt every single day she learned, it's a constant that keeps her interested, challenged and motivated. One of the most important attributes of an entrepreneur she believes in the willingness to learn and adapt. Then she decided, every day she will make a point to create something, as small as a recipe, painting a recycled prop or just refreshing her plants. She found her peace and a sense of accomplishment within such goal. With perspective, she has understood firsthand that rushed decisions are usually, not always, the wrong decisions and expecting what was not committed on paper, doesn't mean much. Other than that, learning to accept the unexpected is part of the journey, that keeps things interesting. She leaned towards the sentiment of focusing on what can go right, and not what may go wrong, it helps her forward, she now say downs and ups, versus ups and downs, so, it's a mindset, she finishes her thinking cycle on a up note. Beyond business, have a greater purpose. Beyond the accomplishment of managing a profitable business, that sustains you and your wider commitments, she believes it's important to consider life purpose. To be able to contribute and give back time, services, or whatever might be applicable to your business model, is a really important consideration. Always fascinated with Maslow Pyramid, it now resonates right self-actualization. So here she is, April 2022, as an advocate for ethical eating and conscious consumption, in April 2022, she decided to actively pursue a professional executive doctorate as a DBA researcher through College de Paris and Ascensia Business School. Her research relates to children obesity in United Arab Emirates, food consumption behavior of the UAE youth and the risk factors of obesity, is it a socio-cultural, economic or a consumerism challenge? At this stage, her life feels right, she has a purpose and she is so excited to be pursuing some deep work that she hopes will make a modest contribution to United Arab Emirates society. That brings her to a question, why do she need an executive DBA? She already have a growing business a schedule pretty full. Why would anyone adds on to a feverish schedule some extra responsibilities? This is actually the correct word, responsibility, what is Caroline, food stylist and expert responsibility? How can she supports her industry? How can she gives back? 
Keeping in mind that 60% of our job is physical, it's only fair to put her brain and heart to the service of the community and plan our next years wisely. This is for the future of our little generation, imagine she can bring to the table few modest shifts, via food consumption, media, schools and FMCG brands, while being supported by UAE legal bodies. She always been a dreamer. But once the first dream becomes a reality, all you want is to keep dreaming and executing more dreams. Here to another dream on its ideation phase, another dream born in the United Arab Emirates. And now we'll leave you with this beautiful paper that is shaping the essence of our research and strongly believe will benefit anyone regardless his or her career path. 1. A possible reason for the low intention behavior correlation is revealed by the relatively strong effect of the participant's general capacity to override or inhibit impulses. 2. At its core, the theory of planned behavior and bearing methodological shortcoming a low intention behavior relation is a warning sign indicating that we may be reaching the limits of reasoned action is concerned with the prediction of intentions behavioral, normative and control beliefs as well as attitudes, subjective norms and perceptions of behavioral control are assumed to feed into and explain behavioral intentions. Whether intentions predict behavior depends in part on factors beyond the individual's control, i.e. the strength of the intention behavior relation is moderated by actual control over the behavior. Barring methodological shortcoming a low intention behavior relation is a warning sign indicating that we may be reaching the limits of reasoned action. So here a challenging and useful exercise she recommends, 1. Set your intentions versus your behavior for at least 21 days, to implement the habit. 2. Observe your actions 3. And watch the magic happen. Thank you for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Do leave your thoughts in the comments section below. For similar type of article please reach us at contact at thebespokediaries.com or you can visit our website www.thebespokediaries.com.